On an island far from home, a man in a lonely cell clings to his last slivers of hope. Time marches on around him. This isn't a scene from the latest Hollywood drama, but rather the life of Lakhdar Boumedian, an Algerian humanitarian aid worker who found himself on the wrong side of the war on terrorism. In 2001, United States officials seized Boumedian in Bosnia and Herzegovina and sent him to the military base at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. After seven years of imprisonment, the United States Supreme Court vindicated Boumedian's demand for legal process, handing down a landmark decision in the war on terrorism. After the September 11th attacks, combatant status review tribunals were established to determine whether detainees held at Guantanamo qualified as enemy combatants. These tribunals afforded alleged enemy combatants, who are individuals that engage in hostilities against the United States, an opportunity to contest the factual basis for their designation as an enemy combatant. A tribunal determined Boumedian to be an enemy combatant, and he sought a writ of habeas corpus in federal district court. The district court dismissed his case for lack of jurisdiction. Guantanamo was located in Cuba, outside the sovereign territory of the United States. In Razul v. Bush, the United States Supreme Court reversed, holding that statutory habeas corpus jurisdiction extended to prisoners held at Guantanamo. Boumedian's habeas petition was then reviewed by the district court. While the petition was pending appellate review, Congress passed the Detainee Treatment Act. The act stripped federal courts of jurisdiction to hear habeas petitions filed by Guantanamo prisoners and permitted only the D.C. Circuit to review decisions of the combatant status review tribunals. In another case, Hamden, the Supreme Court determined that the Detainee Treatment Act didn't apply to cases pending at the time of its enactment. Congress responded to this decision by enacting the Military Commissions Act, which effectively nullified the court's Hamden decision and again stripped jurisdiction from pending cases. Citing the Military Commissions Act, the Court of Appeals concluded it didn't have jurisdiction to hear Bomedian's case. The United States Supreme Court granted cert. The issue before the court was whether the constitutional privilege of habeas corpus applied to foreign citizens held at Guantanamo, and, if so, whether the procedures in the Detainee Treatment Act were an adequate substitute for the writ of habeas corpus. Justice Kennedy, writing for the five-justice majority, determined that the writ did extend to foreign nationals detained at Guantanamo. The court conducted an extensive review of the writ's history and determined its purpose was an essential means of protecting individual freedom. The court reasoned that if Congress wanted to deny habeas review to detainees, Congress must formally suspend the writ in accordance with the suspension clause. That clause states that the writ may not be suspended, quote, unless when in cases of rebellion or invasion the public safety may require it, unquote. Because the government didn't establish that rebellion or invasion warranted total suspension of the writ, stripping the courts of habeas jurisdiction for Guantanamo prisoners was unconstitutional. The majority further held that the procedures provided by the Detainee Treatment Act were an insufficient substitute. Because the act granted only the D.C. Circuit Court jurisdiction to review decisions by the Combatant Status Review Tribunal, the detainees were denied the ability to meaningfully rebut the government's case against them. The court thus reversed the opinion of the circuit court and remanded the case for further proceedings. Justice Souter wrote a concurring opinion. He pointed out that many years of executive detention had elapsed without meaningful scrutiny, and judicial intervention was necessary to preserve the writ's value. Chief Justice Roberts dissented, arguing that the procedures provided by the Detainee Treatment Act were constitutionally sufficient and didn't require formal suspension of the writ. Roberts also chastised the majority for replacing the process carefully crafted by Congress with, quote, a set of shapeless procedures to be defined by federal courts at some future date, unquote. Justice Scalia also wrote a colorful dissent. He asserted that the judiciary had no business meddling in the affairs of national security. He argued that the court's holding would set more terrorists free, which would surely lead to more American deaths. By upholding the importance of an essential constitutional right and access to the courts even in the midst of war and national crisis, Boumediene reaffirmed the rule of law during a tumultuous time in American history.